Welcome all of you tonight to the, those on live stream also. I look forward to these times we spend together. This will be the 19th message in this series on the New Covenant. <clears throat> The new covenant is established upon better promises. Now this uh, this uh, proved to be a bit more challenging than I thought at first. But I'll give you what I have here and I, my desire is that I'll be able to transmit what I've seen to you. <clears throat> In this uh, text in Hebrews, you'll notice that Jesus is mentioned as a high priest, which involves what he's doing now. Salvation has more to do with what he's doing now, even than extracting you from the devil's family. It's quite uh, arresting to consider because there's not, these days, there's not much being said about what Jesus is doing now pertaining to salvation that doesn't have to do with in being inducted into the kingdom of God. But that's, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the present ministry of Jesus. And, and the distinction of the new covenant that is uh, vastly superior to the old covenant, not because it has better rules or better laws, or it's not that. It's that it's established, and this is the thing that's proved to be more daunting than I first <laughs> suspected. It's established. Mm -hmm. uh, and see, most people never think of the new covenant being established. It's established on better promises. <clears throat> now, the New Covenant, of course, was promised through Jeremiah. There was not a lot of direct references to the New Covenant in the prophets. There wasn't any in Moses. And he's, in the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, the prophet, he's, he's the lone prophet that talks about the New Covenant as a new covenant. He's now make a new covenant. Now it's interesting that Jesus, as he began to prepare his disciples for his death, he associates the Lord's Supper with the new covenant. That's a, that itself is a, an arresting consideration. To probe into that, what's involved there. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And this special revelation was given to Paul about this also. He, he said that the Lord revealed this unto me, a special revelation, because no other apostles said anything about the new covenant or the, or the, old, uh, or the uh, Lord's table. It's interesting, isn't it? Other than the record that it was taking place. Paul wrote this after the same manner he took the cup when he, when he had supped, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now, it doesn't make any difference how long you've been in Christ. You'll find that to be a challenging statement. That's a challenging statement. And I'm, uh, I'm willing to, to leave it as a challenging statement because the more I think about it, the more I, I don't think it was intended to be explained. I, I think he said that so that you, so we could muse on that the rest yeah. of our life, what all that involves, and you'll never feel like you got it. That's right. yeah. I've been thinking on that text for well, well over 60 years, mm -hmm. and I'm not satisfied yet with, <laughs> with what I see in that. Now let's rest to uh, fully appreciate 
our text and says the uh, new covenant is established by better promises. Let's, let's re just briefly rehearse some of the promises of the old covenant. Exodus 19, 5 and 6 says, Therefore, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed mm -hmm. and keep my covenant, then ye shall be, here's the promise, then, yeah, that's right. then, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. That's all if you will obey my voice. See, that's... Yes. Again, Leviticus 18.5, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And that's quoted a number of times by the apostles and other inspired New Covenant writers. Now notice the nature of the promise. If, see the promise is preceded, it had a qualification. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 26, 3 and 4. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season and the land shall yield or increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. See? Even though, it was a, even though it was an earthly yeah. promise, it had this yeah. condition that proved to be bigger than the people thought. Yeah. Again, Deuteronomy 7, 12 through 15. Wherefore it shall come to pass that if ye will hearken to these judgments and keep and do that the Lord thy God shall keep them to, shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which thee swear unto thy fathers. Father being Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he will love thee. Oh, what? 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 Did, I, did I understand that right? If ye hearken unto my judgments, then he will love thee? Yeah. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. And bless thee. And multiply thee. And he will also bless the fruit of thy womb and so forth. That's, that's conditioned. <laughs> that's conditioned. Don't you think for one moment that the love of God is unconditional? Whoever, well, I think I know who cooked this up, Dr. Dobson, but it, uh, it's just a lot of malarkey. It's not true, and I wish people would stop saying that term. Mm -hmm. Unconditional love. God's love has never been unconditional. Right. Yeah. It wasn't even unconditional. His own son. He said, my father loves me because I always do what he commands me to do. See, so even it was conditional, even with Jesus. Deuteronomy 28, it shall come to pass, if thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandments I command thee this day, then I will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And then he had, see, he was preceded by this qualification. Deuteronomy 30 verse 16, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways. He loved the Lord thy God. Love him, love him, love him. Walk in his ways, keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. The Lord shall bless thee in the, in the land whither thou goest to possess it. See, it's just, that's the kind of promises now that we're talking about. Most arresting to a to consider. See, the first covenant postulated, or means it, it presupposed, the sinfulness and alienation of man. It was written with this in mind. Man's a sinner. See? He's a sinner by nature. This is a, he's a sinner. He sins because he's a sinner. He's not a sinner because he sins. He sins because he's a sinner. Mm -hmm. and, he, and the old covenant presumed man was a sinner. Mm -hmm. The new covenant presumes man's been cleansed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Completely, completely different. We were alienated. The apostle spent some time developing it. We were alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that was in us. So we... So how, how you tell someone that's alienated from the life of God, what good does it tell them to do what, he's, what God says? 
If the person is alienated from the life of God, that means they're not going to get any life from God. All right, huh? Is this the kind of people that will be able to do what God says? The person should be able to kind of figure this out without development. He was dead in trespasses and sins. It's Ephesians 2. He was a, they were enemies of God. That's Colossians 1.21. So the law is with that background. Yeah. Sinners, alienated from the life of God, mm -hmm. and enemies in their mind by wicked work. So that's whatever the law said, it said with that in mind. Yes, so for God to give a, a superior promise, something has to happen about this condition of humanity. That's right. Because if mankind is a changed, it, we're going to have to stick with the old. Mm -hmm. Unchanged humanity is under the old. I don't see how you can come to any other conclusion. Mm -hmm. See, people think that God eradicated the old covenant. See, they just, these are just ignorant people. I, there's no polite way to say it. They're just ignorant people about the things of God. God can't say this out of his mouth and then take it back. So unless, unless men change, there's not going to be any new covenant. Yeah. Any, any involvement in a new covenant, may I, may I say. Now the old covenant, it was, a, it was established on a, an agreement. They had to agree. They had to say, this will we do. And when they said that, then Moses took the answer back to God. The covenant was not established on what God did. It was established on what men did. Well, you've got to see this now. I read you what the covenant said. If you do this, if you do that. So the covenant was established on these promises that all depended on whether or not men measured up. <clears throat> Now let's uh, let's think for a moment. Let's I'll go to a, some so an example of the better promises that it was established upon. It started with Abraham. See, he didn't say Abraham, if you will obey my voice. Here's what he said to Abraham: I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed. You know, there weren't. There weren't conditions. Again, Genesis 17, 1 through 8. I will make my covenant between me and thee and multiply thee exceedingly. Again, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. It is. See, is, is, is. And under the law, it shall be, shall be, shall be. But now it's is. Now he's got the is's in there. As for me, my covenant is with thee. Thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be called Abram, so forth. Mm -hmm. Now Paul, he comments on this in Galatians 3.18. He says, if the inheritance be of the law, it's no more a promise. <laughs> if it depends upon men, it's not a promise. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what, what he said. If the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. God's not about to make a promise of eternal life based upon the response of men. He's already proved this is not possible. Where are you going to find more attractive promises to people in the world than the ones given under the law? Blessed everywhere you go, blessed in all your flocks, blessed in your fields. It's, where are you going to find something better? Who has ever in the history of the world promised anything like that? Huh? What heathen monarch has ever promised anything like that? But it was not sufficient incentive, see? Because uh, men didn't meet the qualification. Promises were conditioned upon the people doing what they promised. Now let's look at some of these. I told you, Abraham, he received a promise that was better. See? 
She says, this is what I'm going to do. This is what you're going to be. This is what you will be. See, better promise. Now let's look at uh, some of these better, better promises. This is from Isaiah. This is a promise now. Remember, the new covenant is established upon. So these promises are, are the basis for the making of the new covenant. Isaiah 9, 6. Under us a child is born. 800 years before a child was born, it was, or 700, I think it was. He, eight, before it was born, it was, it was promised. You know, as a child is born, and as a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end, and so forth. See, the new covenant is established on that promise, on that commitment of God. The existence of the new covenant depends on that person being born. If he's not, There'll be no new covenant. Here's another. The new covenant was established on better promises. Psalm 2 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Ask of me, I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. The new covenant based on based on that promise. That promise is going to be realized through Christ Jesus. That's not just a wish. That's a commitment from God. The new covenant is established. See, on better promises. Here's another one. Isaiah 49. And he said, it's a light thing. He, I'm, I'm saying this. You might think the new covenant is established on what he promised you. That's not what he's saying. And he said, it's a light thing that thou shouldst be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, in a day of salvation have I helped thee. I will preserve, I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant and give thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth and to cause to inherit the desolate inheritance. See, the new covenant is established on the other, but that's the kind of promise the new covenant is established upon. And what, uh, what, what were some of the promises that the covenant itself contained? Remember, the covenant was established. If you want to know what the new covenant does, you've got to be familiar with what God promised he was going to do. Anyway, it wasn't established on the fact that God loved the world. Although God did love the world. But that's not what, what the new covenant is not established upon that. It's established upon his promises where he leaked out, so to speak, to preferred people by his prophets, he leaked out what he was going to do. And the new covenant is intended to carry out what God intended all along to do. Amen. Now the new covenant is not according to the covenant God made with Israel. It's not, uh, it's not that kind of covenant. It's not a covenant that demands agreement. You say, well, are, do you mean we're not, don't have to agree? No, under the new covenant, his people are willing in the day of his power. Right. See, agreement's not the issue. In the new covenant, agreement's not the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is whether you believe or not. That's Amen. the issue. That's right. But the old covenant had nothing whatsoever to do with believing. Mm -hmm. The law is not of faith. That's the statement, Galatians 3.12. The law nowhere commanded people to believe. See, but the new covenant does. Uh -huh. Believe what? You believe what God said he was going to do. Even though in the flesh it looks impossible to be believed. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. So that he made it when they were fresh deliverance, huh? They had a fresh deliverance on 400 years of bondage. And in one night they walked out yeah. free. 
crossed over the Red Sea miraculously, saw their enemies drowned in the Red Sea, so they had to go at a peak. And that's when they made the covenant, was when they were at this peak. Yeah, yeah. If men could do something good, this would be the time if men could do something good. They'd have all these deliverances, mighty deliverances, no explanation for them but God. Yeah. And the same day the thing was made, they reverted to idolatry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? In the day I took him by the hand to lead him out of Egypt, which my, because they continued not in my covenant. Then Leviticus 18.5 says, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes. Statutes or laws or judgments are a prescribed way of living. You might be surprised that the number of professing Christians that believe that you please God by following a prescribed way of living. Yeah. Even though how we're to live, it's just specified. I mean, it is, but the Holy Spirit teaches us how to deny ungodly some worldly lusts, to live soberly, righteously, and godly. Now, here's some of the promises God made. The new covenant is established upon this. The new covenant is the means by which this promise is going to be fulfilled. Now, I'm going to. I will put my laws in their hearts and write them in their minds. I will put my law, this is Hebrews 8.10, I'll put my laws in their hearts and write them in their minds. All right, now let's compare that to a promise under the law. Jeremiah 6.19, Hear, O earth, because I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened to my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Hmm? How does that compare with what he said? I will write my law in their hearts. Jeremiah 9, 13. The Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, not obeyed my voice. See, see how does that compare with, I'll write my laws in their heart and put them in their mind. Or Jeremiah 16, 11. Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. See, that, how, does that, how does that match up with I'll write it? Well, see, don't people, don't professing Christians do this? Yeah, professing, yes, professing Christians do this. But that just proves they're not in. You say, well, that seems pretty easy. Rigid. Well, I guess it is, it is intended to be. Yeah. He said, they shall, they shall, they shall, they shall. So if they don't, what does that mean? Right. Does that mean God failed? Does it mean his promise no. failed? No. I will write them in their heart. Amen. Let's compare that with the observations made of Israel. Who, uh, he had dealings with Israel. We're talking about an exclusive people that God had chosen, God had blessed, God had fed, God had led. <laughs> We're talking about them. He says, Isaiah 44, 18, they have not known nor understood, and he, he, God, shut their eyes. They cannot see. So if you don't understand, you better get that resolved. You better get that resolved if you don't understand. Because this, this tells you what he did with Israel when they didn't understand. He blinded them. Hosea 7, 2. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. See? <laughs> the law wasn't written in their heart. They didn't even remember what he said. Zechariah 7, 12. They made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear my law. So they, they stubbornly braced themselves so the word of God would bounce off of them. See, these are better promises we're talking about. The law presumed that's the kind of people they were. It spoke to people that were like that. But the new covenant doesn't address people like that. Yeah. See, the promises of God are not addressed to people like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we should never think that it is. Yeah. Here's the law. The new covenant says, I will be there to them a God. That is a God... They would they will prefer me above other God, all other gods. So let's see how does that how did that work out under Israel? Judges two twelve. They forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods. See, that's what they did. 
Jeremiah 11, 10, they turned their back to the iniquities of their fathers, which refused to hear my words. They went after other gods to serve them. That's what they did. Now, God can, uh, well, with God, all things are possible. But apparently that condition couldn't be changed by a word from God. Be thou new. Yeah. That's a, see, we're in a different we're in a different arena now. Amen. When you when you're in a moral arena, it's a different it's a different kind of right. arrangement. Hosea three one. Remember now, they'll they'll they'll, they'll be they'll, they'll I'll be the God they want. Mm -hmm. Hosea three one. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet love a woman beloved of a friend. And she was hobnobbing with her friend instead of her husband. Yet an adulteress, according to the love of God, toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So they not only, they had this in propensity. Yeah. New God cropped up, they oh, they just embraced it. See, the new covenant is not that kind of covenant. Amen. It's not according to that covenant. So you see people defecting from the faith, departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, see? That's not the kind of covenant we're under. Yeah, amen. Something bad wrong in people like that say they're saved. <laughs> Something's bad wrong here. Uh -huh. That's not the kind of covenant that he has. Hosea 1.9 Then said God, call his name Loami, it's one of his offspring, for ye are not my people and I will not be your God. Now how does that compare with I will be their God? Yeah, See? Yeah. See, it's a different. Yeah. New Covenant says, they shall all know me. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the New Covenant. This, this is, it isn't that this is the goal of the New Covenant. Yeah, yeah. This happens under the New Covenant. Yeah. All right, let's see. Well, that, that, and that, that's one of the promises the Covenant's established on. Mm -hmm. That is what God promised takes place. Yeah. In the New Covenant. Jeremiah 4.22 says, My people's foolish, they have not known me. Yeah. New Covenant says, they'll all know me. Uh -huh. The Old Covenant, they didn't know me. They don't know me. That's right. Hosea 5.4, They will not frame their doings to turn unto the Lord their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is, the midst, is in the midst of them, for they have not known the Lord. See that? That's not what the New Covenant says. That's why when Paul wrote Corinthians, he says, Some among you do not know God, and I say this to your shame. Yeah, right. It's shameful for a person to claim identity with Christ and not know God. And it just might surprise you how many professing Christians have no practical acquaintance with God. They don't have the faintest idea when he's present or when he's not or what he desires, or what he does it, they just don't know God. But that's, that's not the way manner of the new covenant. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. That's the new covenant. It's established on that, that kind of promise. Now let's compare that with the old covenant. Deuteronomy 19.13, Thine eyes shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. I will be merciful. No mercy at all. <laughs> the law didn't extend mercy. It says it this way in Hebrews 10, 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. Mm -hmm. But the new covenant, mercy is existence. I will be merciful to them. Right. See, it's, it's a different kind of covenant. Amen. Something different has, has happened. It's addressed to a different kind of people. Mm -hmm. Different kind of covenant addressed to different kind of people where a different kind of work was done. I'll be merciful. There are sins and iniquities, so I remember no more, New Covenant says. Mm -hmm. The New Covenant is established on that, that and other similar promises. I will remember their iniquities no more. Yeah. Now, how does that match up with the Old Covenant? Remember, these are better, better promises. Jeremiah 5, 6. Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn to pieces, because, because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings increase. He didn't forget theirs. Yeah, uh -huh. hmm? He didn't forget their sins. Yeah, yeah. 
Jeremiah 16, 18, At first I will recompense their iniquity, their sin double, because they defiled my land, they filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things, and he cites their past sins. He hadn't forgotten them. He didn't, re he didn't cease to remember them. See, it's a different, different covenant. God didn't say to Israel, I'll not remember your sins. <laughs> God didn't say that to them. These are better promises. Yes. These better promises are based upon the atoning death of Christ who took away the sin of the world. They're made with that in mind. The covenant's yes. based upon that, these promises that were made in view of what Jesus would do. Take away, he take he took away the sin of the world. See, the new promises are, and the new covenant is based on promises that resulted Amen. from that. He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's the reason why God's merciful. It's not because people measured up. Yeah. It's because of what Jesus did. Justification makes a person righteous. See? Amen. Yes, amen. The law didn't make anybody righteous. It just told them what how to define righteousness, but it didn't make anybody righteous. But the new covenant is established on better promises, promises where God said, I will do, I will do, they shall, they shall. He? Now we're justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. Acts 13, 39, you couldn't. Now being justified by faith, we have peace with God. This didn't... Under an arrangement of agreement, this can't be. That's right. Just, you got to do more than say, I'll do it, Lord. That's you right. you got to do more than that. Mm -hmm. You've got to believe what God said, and then faith will induce you Amen. to do what you said. Yes. But if a person doesn't, but see, this is why people are disobedient. They don't believe. Because faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So if a person is overcome by the world, whatever that may have come out of their mouth, they didn't believe. They haven't been taking advantage of this new covenant, which is established upon better promises. See, the sanctification occurred at the cross. There's, a, there's two kinds of sanctification. One is that sets the people apart, God setting the people apart. The other is where they work out their salvation, fear and trembling. That's the practical, which has to be done. Now, this has to be done. But it can only be done if God is sanctified by God. Now, Hebrews 10, 9 and 10 says, Then said he, we're comparing this now with Old Covenant promises. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, and he may establish the second, by the which will. That's a, that's a new covenant. That's, that's what the will is. It's not verb will. It's not like will and testament. Yeah. That kind of will. By the which will we are sanctified. We are mm -hmm. sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So here's how it works. Through Christ's death, God accepts you through your faith in it. That's right. Amen. God accepts you, That's right. see, yep. takes your sin away, yes. yeah. puts you in Christ uh -huh. for all time. The only thing that will interrupt that's unbelief. Amen. Yeah. Now that's a different kind of a covenant, see, that's, right. that's based upon better promises. Yeah. Now the, the core of the new covenant isn't what we do, it's what God did through Christ. Amen. Hebrews 10, 14, by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Oh, what does that mean? That means what you get in redemption cannot be improved on. Amen. Amen. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You can't improve on it. You, you, you get newness of life is, does not equate to baby life. He accepts you fully because the thing that separated you has been fully removed. See, that's a different kind of a covenant. See, established on a better, better promises. Now, these promises, you advance in the faith through these promises, too. The new covenant is established on better promises, which include the idea of advancing. 
Israel retrogressed. They didn't progress. They went backward. In fact, the prophets actually said that. They went backward. But now you, you've been, you begin Christ, you become a, part of a forward yeah. process. Amen. And that forward movement is part of the new covenant and is based on better promises. Amen. Now here's, here's some of those better promises, Romans 8, 29, and 30. Whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Mm -hmm. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the new covenant, by saying the new covenant is established on better promises, because in the new covenant, that happens. Yes, amen. That's right. That takes place. The, the work is not merely begun, mm -hmm. it's finished. Yes, amen. It's carried forward to a completion. That's right. But see, you have to believe this. Uh -huh. You have to believe this. That there's, there's all, the woods are full of preachers that are teaching people how to live. Mm -hmm. They're all over the place, kind of like dung on a farm field. They're out there teaching people how to live, how to have good marriages, how to be successful. That's not even the kind of covenant we got. Yes, amen. He makes you new because that's what he promised he's going to do. Amen. He promised he's going to be, I'll give you a new heart, I'll give you a new spirit, you walk in my ways, you walk in my yes. See, that God said he was going to do that. Amen. And the new covenant, the new covenant, he actually does do it. Amen. And now, how to live, you learn this directly between you and the Lord. Amen. It gives you the Holy Spirit yes. who leads you in mortifying or putting to death the deeds Amen. of the body. Amen. It gives you the grace of God which teaches you uh -huh. to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, live soberly, righteously, and godly. See, why does he do this for us? But he didn't do that for Israel on the New Covenant. Because the Old Covenant was not on this kind of foundation. That's right. That's right. The Covenant wasn't based, the Old Covenant wasn't based on the remission of sin, or newness of heart, or newness of spirit, see? Or being willing in the day of his power. It wasn't based on that. It was strictly based on, here's what you do, you agree to do it, now I'm gonna hold you to, your, to the agreement. Mm -hmm. You can't say, we couldn't do it. That's not the right response. That's, right. That's, right. That's not the right response. Mm -hmm. The right response is, save us, Lord. That's yeah. the right yeah. response. Yeah. That's the kind of covenant we're under. Yes. We're not under a covenant that you try harder. Mm -hmm. Give me another chance, Lord. Let me, let me try and walk on the water again. I didn't do too good that first time. Let me, let me have another try at it, Lord. I'll, that's not what the kind of covenant we've got. The new covenant doesn't just set you on top of the stormy wave. The new covenant takes you out of the stormy deep. Puts your feet on a solid rock. Puts a new song of praise in your mouth. And I know someone said, well, how come, how come people depart from that because they, they do there are people who depart yeah. from the faith it's because it's because they fail to live by faith yes, amen. That's right. faith is a victory that overcomes the world that's the genius of the new covenant yes, amen. if you can keep on believing yes. you'll keep on winning amen. if you can keep on believing you'll keep on appropriating that's, that's right. the nature of the new covenant because it's based on something other than what you do it's based on promises that depended upon what Jesus did. Amen. Think of it this way, when Jesus came, humbled himself, boy, I mean it was a long distance from heaven to earth. I mean, <laughs> the degree of humiliation involved here transcends any human conception. The reason Jesus did that wasn't because you had a uh, especially high value. It because he was wanted what God had promised, see? Yeah. Mm 
to come to pass. Yeah. And God knew that what he promised would never come to pass unless the Savior came, yes. went back to heaven and mediated until this thing. See, it was based on better, yes. better promises. Mm -hmm. Promises that actually they don't have to do with life in this world. Yes. Yes. It's possible to Love life and see good days, as Peter said. Mm -hmm. But the value of it is is measurable. It's it's not what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. People that are wealthy and have a lot of possessions, their mates still die. Yeah. Their children still get caught up in drugs. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. see, they still they go through all the troubles everybody else goes through, right. huh? But this new covenant is not that kind of covenant. Yes. Amen. You actually become superior mm -hmm. to life in the world Amen. because of what God did, and he did it because of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Jesus, just to make sure that it's carried out properly, he sends the comforter. Mm -hmm. See, so you've got, you've got God, Christ, the comforter, right. all involved. And what they're doing is fulfilling the promises. Yes. Amen. That's what they're doing. That's I think I'll, I'll conclude there, but I hope I didn't mud muddy the waters there. <laughs> but that, uh, it's simply marvelous to, to consider how thorough, it's okay, how thorough the new covenant it is. Amen. It can't be added to, it couldn't possibly be any better than it is right now. So the good, the, the fight of faith, that's, that's the issue, is whether we will keep the faith, whether we can keep believing Amen. this. If it seems like it's not all happening to you now, hold in there now. Mm -hmm. Hold in there now. God has promised. He's faithful at promise. Amen. If you're not mature, don't, don't, be, don't be down in the dumps because of that. Mm -hmm. in, instead, trust in God. He'll bring, be like Job. If you got to sit and scrape the boils, sit and scrape the boils. But you're going to come out of this thing. You're going to come out of it. Because the new covenant is based on bitter Amen. promises. Amen. Brother Bob, you're the one that yes. had the hesitation? Okay.